Welcome again to this second segment of our class in prose. In this segment, we are going to be treating narrative techniques and devices in prose narrative. And we are going to divide the lesson into three categories. We will look at narrative technique, also known as point of view. We are going to be looking at characters and characterization, as well as language usage in prose. Now, let's begin with the first, which is narrative technique or point of view. Now, when we talk about narrative technique, we are simply referring to the angle or perspective from which the events in a story are narrated. So, definitely, point of view or narrative technique simply has to do with the angle from which we, the readers, are listening to the narrator narrate a particular story. So, let's look at the types of narrative techniques in prose. The first is the omniscient or third-person narrative style. The narrator is always outside of the story, and in this point of view, the narrator relates all the action of their work using the third-person personal pronoun, such as he, she, they, and the like. A practical example is the narrative style employed in Chino Achebe's masterpiece titled Things Fall Apart. Now, a very quick examination of this narrative style will reveal that the third-person narrative technique is always accounting for the items in the story from an angle of which he is not part and parcel of the story. Therefore, the usage of third-person personal pronouns are highly applicable. Now, if I should quote some excerpts in this example we've used, it will buttress our points. The first few lines in Achebe's Things Full Apart will always say that Okungwo was well known all through the nine villages from Mbiano to Umofia, and at age 18, he had become so famous because he had brought honor to his people by defeating Amalingze the cat, who was unbeaten in wrestling for seven years. Now you could see clearly that this narrator seems to be watching an event from an angle and then narrates that story to the readers. And the usage, like I had said, of third-person personal pronouns are highly applicable. Now, the omniscient narrator is so called because this narrator seems to be operating like a divine creator. He seems to see what is going on in the minds of the characters in the work and then tells us what is going on. And also, a practical context in this work will reveal that when Ikemefuna, a body of war, was entrusted in the care of Okonkwo, at the time it was expected for him to bring up the child for sacrifice. But he had this soft spot for the boy, of which was not expected of a real man at the time. At a point when they were expected to hack the boy down, the, the man, one of the men there actually pulled his knives and smacked the boy at the back. Then the young man actually ran to Okonkwo and said, Father, they have killed me. Okonkwo pulled out his knife and then hacked him down. At that point, the narrator said that Okonkwo did this because he never wanted to be thought weak. That is why this third-person narrator is also known as the omniscient narrator. Because he can move into the stream of consciousness of the narrator, of the actors rather, and then even tell the audience what is going on in the thought process of the characters. If you see an instance again, when Okonkwo was discussing with his close friend, he was complaining about his son Woye, who was always very feminine in nature. But at that point, the narrator made us to understand that his friend was thinking clearly in his mind that that boy is taking that trait from the late father of Okonkwo. I'm always talking about the flutist. That is what this narrator does. Unoka, who happens to be the late father of Okonkwo, actually was behaving like that. But the narrator seems to go inside the minds of the actors and reveal their thought process to the readers. That is why they are called the omniscient narrator. You can also call them the eye of God because they seem to be so knowledgeable, just like a divine creator. Now, the next narrative technique is the first person narrator. The first person narrator in prose is always that person that narrates 
the character or the event in time. This character may be speaking about himself or herself or sharing events that he or she personally experienced. It can be recognized by the use of the first person pronouns like I and we. Now, in the first person narrative style, it is sharply contrasting with the third person. The narrator seems to be telling us from a subjective angle. Now, the striking difference between the third person and the first person narrative technique is that the first person narrator is always part and parcel of the story from which he or she is narrating. But the third person is not an actor in the work. Rather, he observes the events from an angle and narrates same to the readers. But in the first person, we see the narrator being a character in the work. Therefore, this narrative style uses first person personal pronouns and it is always the narrative technique used in autobiographies. A very traceable example is a work put forward by Chima Mandara Diche and is titled Purple Hibiscus. In that work, we saw Camilito being a character and the heroine in that work narrating the events for us. We seem to know so much about Eugene from her angle as well as all other characters. In summary of these two narrative styles, you will agree with me clearly that the most objective narrative technique is the third person narrative style because this character is not part of the work but in the first person narrative there is always high level subjectivity because the narrator seems to tell the story from a subjective view like in the work of purple hibiscus we saw clearly that the feelings the audience had to develop for eugene and any other character was as a result of the story told to the readers by the narrator so there is high level subjectivity and most importantly the usage of the first person personal pronoun permit me to quote some excerpts from a very popular autobiography written by nelson mandela and that is titled long walk to freedom where the personal pronouns i and we are used to explain in that work mandela says and i quote i do not however deny that i had planned sabotage i did not do so in the spirit of recklessness neither do i have any love of violence i had done it after a calm and sober assessment of the political situation in our country which had arisen after several years of exploitation oppression and tyranny of my people by the whites the hard facts remain that 50 years of non-violence and peace had brought nothing to the african people but more and more repressive legislations and fewer and fewer rights he went further to say i have walked this long road to freedom i have tried not to falter i have made me steps along the way but i have taken a moment of rest to carry out a view of what I have done in the past, but that will only last for a moment, for freedom comes with responsibilities, and I dare not linger, for my long walk has not yet come. Now you can see clearly the usage of the I and we personal pronouns, first person personal pronouns, which is always in cases of autobiographies where the first person narrative technique is always highly applicable now the second aspect of techniques in prose is characterization when we talk about characters we are simply talking about the vehicle of action in every work of art the story will be laid down now the people who will enact the content of the plot are those we refer to as characters and in this context characterization is the concept now, let's begin to look at the types of characters in prose. The first is the round character. This character is susceptible and prone to change, either physically, economically, geographically, or a combination of all. This character is also known as a dynamic character. A round character is that character that grows, that develops, that changes from the beginning of the work up to the end of that work 
there will be high level and noticeable changes in terms of economic, geographical or even physical growth of the character. A very practical example is the heroine used by Flora Mwapa in her book titled One is Enough. In One is Enough, we saw Amaka as the heroine in the work and we saw the level of growth which she underwent all through a certain period from which the contents of the text had lasted. Now we had also seen clearly that this young girl being betrothed to Obiora at a very tender age was being accused of infidelity and because of her inability to conceive she moved away from the village to a larger part of the society in Lagos where she met Father McClellan and conceived to birth twin boys. We also saw that she moved from Lagos to America where she got her university degree and got back to her village to build. Now we can see the levels of growth, changes and developments of which this character had undergone and these types of characters are known as round characters because they change, they grow, they develop, they transform. They do not in any way seem to be the same as they were when the narrative had begun. The second type of character is the flat character. Now, the flat character is also known as a static character. This character does not undergo change. It does not even accept change and may likely remain the same from the beginning to the end of the narrative. Now, when we talk about flat characters, it is in sharp contrast to the round character. Whereas the round characters or dynamic characters will always transform and grow, the flat character is resistant to change. It does not develop. It remains the same. It remains static from the beginning of the narrative up to the end. I will trace two possible illustrations of these characters for your understanding. The first is the heroine in a book titled Popular Hibiscus, which we are talking about Camelito. That's another example of a flat character. And then the next one will be the hero in Chinua Chavez Things Fall Apart, known as Okonkwo. These two characters are traceable examples of a flat character. And if you read this text, you will see that they subscribe to the definitions that we have full mentioned. Now, we talk about the hero as another type of character. This is the main and central character in a prose work who possesses sterling and approving qualities, who always pursues and fight for a good and justified cause. You can also call this character a protagonist. The hero is always pursuing a good cause against an evil calm. He is a good person. He possesses sterling qualities and likes to lay down his life even to save or salvage the lives of people. Any character that possesses these qualities could also be known as a hero. Now, we have the anti-hero as the next type of character. This character is also known as an antagonist. He is the character who pursues an evil cause and is always mashed against the hero. Usually, the anti-hero fails in his quest and this is the reason the anti-hero is slightly different from a villain. Therefore, the anti-hero is always in line with tragic comedies, whereas the villain is always, most importantly, characterized in tragedies. But the anti-hero generally will always be pursuing an evil cause. He will always be opposing the good intentions of the hero. This is usually what brings about the conflict, most especially in every tragic comic place. A traceable example is a book written by William Shakespeare and is titled Merchants of Venice. In that play, we could see two of these characters. Antonio could be called a hero and then Shylock is the anti-hero because these two people, even though they were popular characters, were pursuing divergent and opposing intentions of which characterizes them as heroes and anti-heroes. Now, very importantly is another type of character known as the eponymous character. This main character is that person in which the title of the work is named after. It is very clearly important to know that an eponymous character 
also known as the eponym, is that character in which the work of art is named after him. It is very important to trace our illustrations to all of William Shakespeare's tragic plays, which are always attributed to an eponym. So we can say again that all of Shakespeare's tragic heroes are eponymous. I'm talking about Shakespeare's Hamlet. I'm talking about again when we mention Julius Caesar, when we talk about Macbeth, Romeo and Juliet, and even Othello. All, all these characters are eponymous because the work of art is named after them. Now let's look at Foil as another character. This is a character who contrasts with another character, usually the protagonist, to highlight particular qualities of the other character. Most importantly, a subplot is always used to promote the intent of the fall. If we talk about a subplot, I will refer you to William Shakespeare's tragic play titled Hamlet, where we saw Hamlet creating a subplot in order to confirm the claims of his late father's ghost. In that context, you can say clearly that Claudius was a fall in the subplot context. Now, let's also talk about the last aspect of our narrative techniques in prose, which is language. Language refers to the predominant use of a particular language in prose. The language of prose can be simple, it can be complex, it can even be archaic or even mixture of all these. Language is very important because it is the vehicle of which the characters in a prose text use to convey the content of the plot. Now, it is also very important to mention that the language of a prose text can be pre-selected by the writer. It could be simple, it could be complex, it could be a mixture of these. It could be an expression of local color as we saw moving around Chinua Chebe's things fall apart. Language could also be used to express the milieu from which that particular literary work emanates from. It is also very important to observe that the target audience of which the creator of that particular work is writing to can influence the language usage of the work. Thank you very much as we have concluded this aspect of our lesson and I enjoin and urge you to watch out for our subsequent videos. Thank you.